So there was a very rapid sequence of events uh, in early 2015. There was the Prince Philip knighthood on Australia Day the 26th of January. Only five days later, uh, there was the Queensland state election in which a first term government with a huge majority lost the election. My political career is over. It is over. The result has been described as catastrophic by some federal coalition MPs, with some claiming it has irreparably damaged Mr Abbott's hold on power. Is Tony Abbott the man to lead the uh, Liberals to the next federal election? Well, that's, uh, that's a discussion, isn't it? We need to look at where we're going. The Queensland election sent a shiver up the spine about what was coming for us unless we got our act together. The polls are terrible. Why? Because you're such a popular opposition leader. Why has the electorate lost faith in you as a prime minister? Koshi, I'm not looking at polls. I'm focused on what is going to do... And then only nine days after that, there was the empty chair spill. Did Tony Abbott know that there was trouble afoot? I'm not sure Tony Abbott fully understood the strength of the feeling in the party room. The idea that he had brought so many people into the parliament was delivering on everything. You know, surely nobody would be as foolish as to want to undermine the government. I did say to people internally, the Prime Minister's office and Tony, that I felt that there was movement at the station, so to speak, and that we should be prepared for that. Um, but I must admit the Prime Minister's office didn't feel that was going to happen at all. It became concerning to myself that nobody was actually doing the numbers for the Prime Minister. And so I garnered the support of a few colleagues and we divided the parliamentary list and uh, there was a particular name, Scott Morrison's, that was on my list. I had a discussion with uh, Mr Morrison, which I must say left me cold. Um, I, yeah, he, he professed his disinterest in what was happening. I said to him at the time, uh, Scott, we're talking about the prime ministership of our country. We are cabinet colleagues. How can you sort of pass this off as being of no real interest to you? I was getting phone calls from various, what you'd call, warlords from, from, from New South Wales who were pushing the need for, for Tony to, to go. There's no way that I would be receiving phone calls from those individuals in New South Wales unless they were doing that with the approval of their political master. It's as simple as that. And that master was Scott Morrison? I assume that their master is Scott Morrison. I don't run a faction in the Liberal Party. My colleagues, um, and they all made their own decisions. There was a lot of disgruntlement. And when you know, Don Randall um, and Luke Simpkins came forward out of the West, um, that brought that to a head. Have you uh, called for the spill motion against the PM? Uh, yes, I have called for the spill motion. The hand grenade lobbed after midday Eastern time from the West. WA Liberal MP Luke Simpkins emailed the entire Liberal parliamentary wing, saying he'd been flooded by complaints from his electorate since Australia Day. Because this is what the uh, people uh, of my electorate want, and this is what the people of Australia want. Thanks very much. Well, you know, look, I... This is not exactly my style to call a spill motion, but... Uh, I was, I'd really sort of had enough at that point, and I'd probably also had enough with talk and no action. And so uh, I spoke to Tony and told him I was going to do it. Uh, and he said he wished I wouldn't do it. He said that it would damage the country. Uh, and I said, well, I think this has got to go to the party room for a judgment. And at this point, I didn't particularly want Malcolm as leader. First preference is Scott, but I call Scott Morrison and, uh, and he told me that he was definitely not going to run. We all said they are asking 
the party room to vote out the people that the electorate voted in in September 2013. We are not the Labor Party and we are not going to repeat the chaos and the instability of the Labor years. Malcolm was being told by people that he could win. And he rang me and said, what do you think? And I said, you don't have the numbers. You can only stick your hand up when you, we know that we've got the numbers. You know, one of my colleagues said to me, there's no need for you to do anything. Let him just burn down to the waterline. It did come as a surprise to many of us who, you know, in the party room and uh, this spill occurred. Um, it seemed to be quite ill-advised, particularly when there was an empty chair there. It was called an empty chair spill because the motion was simply to declare the position of leader vacant and there was no actual challenger. The empty chair was Malcolm Turnbull. Everyone knew that. It was, you know, a really weird mood in that room. The murmur of whispers it was actually quite deafening. Donny Randall, God bless his soul, there were no airs or graces with Don. He just got up and, and declared it on. So the whips do what they do, and uh, everyone's trying to sneak a look at what someone's writing on their paper. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? That my party, after all they've seen the Labor Party tear themselves to pieces and do, I'm watching them do exactly the same thing. The uh, whip stands to his feet and says, Tony Abbott's got 61 votes and the empty chair's got 39. There was a hush and there was a, a, a ghostly look. It was just awful uh, on the Prime Minister's face when those numbers were revealed to him. There was this stunned rabbit in the headlights um, response. He leant against the front of the desk and then he said, there will be change. There will be greater involvement. Backbenchers will be included. And I will listen. And I will make the changes that you've signalled that I need to make. All of us are determined to lift our game. And the fundamental point I make is that the solution to all of these things is good government. And good government starts today. Good government starts today. Look, that was, that was a terrible line, because uh, that was an admission that you had bad government before. The Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, made it very clear that uh, Peter Cradden would be stepping back and that elected members would be stepping forward. And one way of doing this was having uh, regular meetings with cabinet ministers and backbench chairs of committees. Good idea, way of opening up those conversations. The first time we walk into this meeting, the person sitting at the table running the meeting is, of course, Peter Credlin. We've got a lot to discuss today, and uh, let's get down to business. Did you think then that the leadership rumblings were over? No. It was very clear Malcolm was on a mission. And it was all about Malcolm. A lot of people said Turnbull was actively undermining Abbott. Now, did it happen and how did it happen? Um, yes, it did. And there are times that I, in, in public in front of others, said directly to Turnbull's face, uh, I believe you're leaking to the press. I believe you've got a campaign 
that is working against Abbott. What did he say to that? Uh, you know, sort of, I suppose, a shrug. He would have seen a, you know, a, a minion, you know, squealing at him. <laughs> I don't recall Barnaby Joyce making those criticisms to me at that time at all. Uh, in fact, the leaks that were coming out of the Abbott cabinet were clearly coming from the Prime Minister's office. I think people on both sides of, you know, the loyalists of Abbott's and loyalists of Turnbull's leaked to prosecute um, their agendas. But nobody had any doubt that Malcolm was stalking Tony's leadership. There was a sense of blood on the water. <laughs>